The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. on Friday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets catching a lift this morning on a strong retail sales number already in the green, coming into that number at 830. But I got the chart of the S&Ps up here. We're up nearly 21 points right now, trading at 4450. You see the acceleration at 830 on that retail sales number. We trade from about 4442 up to high overnight uh, in this morning, I should say, 44.53.75 to be exact. We backed off a bit. You're still positive by about half a percent. You put this thing on a 15 minute just for the week we've had. You back it up to the lows of Tuesday and Wednesday. You're talking about 130 S&P points. We are above that price point, 44.50 as we come into the opening bell for Friday. Tech stocks. Higher as well. Now you look at where we are, though, in terms of the 8:30 volatility. You saw the spike higher in the S and P's. Nasdaq 100 actually giving up that spike. Dow accelerating higher. We're above 35,000 in the futures. Positive 235 points. Dow at 35,016. Get your 35,000 uh, Dow hats out. Russell positive by 18 points as well. You see the Russell catching a bit. So on that retail sales number, you get the Russell higher. Dow higher, S&P holding on to some gains as well, but growth stocks not exactly extending. Speaking of extending, how about crude? We hit 82.30 overnight. We're trading at 81.76. Gold pulling back in a big way. Gives back all the gains it had on Wednesday and Thursday. We're back to almost the lows you had on Wednesday, 17.69. Gold's down 28 bucks or 1.5%. Silver's down 20 cents at 23.27. We jump to notes and bonds, a little bit of a reversal. This is part of the reason why you're seeing growth stocks as we're seeing higher yields. Growth stocks not accelerating to the degree that you have the Dow, S&P, maybe the Russell. You have the 10-year yields right now approaching 1.56%. 1.56. We're approaching 1.5 pretty much uh, in yesterday's action. Right now, you're negative by 10 ticks at 131.06. The 30 years negative 16 ticks right now at 159.19. And we jump over to the volatility index. Could we get a 15 handle to end the week? Very possible. 16.24 was the pre-market low in the VIX. We're trading at 16.53 just to back things up. I mean, look at this fall off in volatility. There was a sustained VIX above 18 going all the way back to September 27th. You were above 17, right? Going back, we got a 16.99 print on September 10th. We got a 1689 print on September 7th. We are now back to remarkably September 3rd volatility index. Uh, you think about that was really the beginning of the run to negative prices in the markets when we got the August non-farm payroll number in September. We come into basically the end of summer trading. The markets really fall out of bed September 7th. We had a high in the VIX of almost 29. And just like that, we wiped it all out. Interesting. We're coming into earnings season. We got Netflix kicking things off next week. Now we have Goldman Sachs out with their numbers today. Let's jump over to Goldman before we get into the retail sales numbers. Goldman right now, you're trading up about 10 bucks to $400 on the spot. Goldman was at 391 yesterday. You put this thing on a daily, so where 400 is, you get a high of 420.76 back in late August. 400 right near the upper boundary line for Goldman Sachs trading higher on their numbers. Now, Let's jump over real quick before we get into the retail sales, since we just pulled up Goldman. Big numbers. How about earnings? Almost a 50% beat. 14.93 a share versus 10.18. Uh, revenue, almost $2 billion extra. What's going on with the estimates now? Investment banking was huge here. Getting into some of the numbers. There's the earnings. Revenue. There's the revenue. 13.6. Uh, yeah, I guess I had another article up here. I mean, they beat in big ways. We'll pull it up. Um, maybe I had the Bloomberg article I was reading earlier. Investment banking. Yeah, strong investment banking and trading results. Maybe this one has a little bit more details. Nah. I want the actual numbers. 
We'll pull them up later in the show. Nonetheless, strong numbers from Goldman, investment banking. I wonder how analysts miss the mark so much uh, in investment banking where, you know, deals coming down the pipeline, pretty much uh, something you may be able to find out about. But nonetheless, the bank's beat in a big way. Expectations were sky high, and they've all kind of beaten a big way. Now, yesterday it was interesting. We had a little bit of a divergence going on in terms of what happened after the opening bell yesterday. You had Bank of America. All the banks traded lower immediately. But then you had a portion of them regain those gains. There's Bank of America's action. You make a low at 10 a.m. before you charge higher. Uh, compare that to Wells Fargo. Uh, no trade higher in Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, a continued dog, down to 45 bucks yesterday, catching a little bit of a lift today. All right, let's jump over to those retail sales numbers because, man, you cannot overstate uh, how much of a beat this is, I think. You know, you're talking about an increase of 0.7% is the headline number. Uh, we'll get down. So auto surprised with a 0.5% increase after a 3.3% decline in August. Autos ain't going down just yet, folks. Uh, getting into the headline number, overall retail sales purchases increased 0.7% in September, following an uply, upwardly revised 0.9% increase in August. The market was looking for a 0.2% decline. That's a big number. Uh, let's see. Excluding autos, sales increased 0.8%. The market was looking for 0.5% advance, excluding autos. So a beat across the board, I mean, a huge beat when you look at 0.7% versus looking for a decline. Just the fact that you had a rise of almost a full percent when the market was really expecting a decrease in retail sales. Just scrolling down. So broad improvement, yeah, getting into the sectors. 11 of the 13 categories posted increases last month. Sporting goods and hobby stores, 3.7%. General merchandise, 2%. Big numbers. Um, higher prices across an array of spending categories in recent months as businesses pass along material shipping and labor costs. Inflation, obviously, on our minds. The so-called control group sales, which are used to calculate GDP and exclude food services, auto dealers, building material stores, and gas stations, rose 0.8% in September. So the market takes that and runs with it, obviously. Uh, we extend the gains that we had, whether it was from Wednesday's low. I mean, Thursday's action was all up upward action. We came into the market in higher territory, and all day you traded higher in the S&Ps, and we extend those gains overnight. And you're talking about, I mean, what's to get in the way of these stocks right now? As we come into Friday trading, the banks exceeded expectations in a big way, and uh, we march into earnings season, kicking things off next week with some of the growth stocks, with Netflix coming out with their numbers, taking a look at Netflix. Why not? As we come into the opening bell, higher we go to 638 from 633. We'll take a look at Disney shares. Disney trading at 175. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks this morning. Amazon shares up about six bucks so far. And as I mentioned, right, growth stocks with a little bit of a rising yield this morning. We're now above 1.56%. I mean, check out some of the moves going on here. Look at this drop off in the 10 year in a big way. We're down 12 ticks right now and it's not stopping at 130.104. Yields now above 1.56%. That's uh, seeing some sustained pressure on the NASDAQ 100. You can see we're basically where we were almost at the close of yesterday. Uh, we'll give it a little credit in terms of a little bit higher, but you're talking about a quarter percent versus S&P's a half a percent, the Dow six tenths percent, and the Russell nine tenths percent. Quite a pop on the Russell in that retail sales number. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back. We'll check out what else we have going on. Some of the equities moving this morning. We'll look at the banks. We'll take a look at Netflix as well with their numbers next week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up.
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps positive by 20 points right now. Back to a 15-minute chart. Just kind of hanging out where we've been for the uh, better part of the last 15 minutes as we've been just starting the program. All the markets about 11 minutes away from the open. We'll see how we react. Uh, jumping back to what else we have going on. Jumping over to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, did we just get a high? Did we? 60,695. What's the high? 65,000. There you go. Man, this thing just does not stop. You're up 2,000 bucks again. There's your acceleration right out of the gate at about 10.30 last night where this thing pops from 57,000 and change up to 60,695. You're trading 60,305. Let's jump over to Ethereum real quick. You have Ethereum. 38.90 was the high last night. You're trading at 38.19. Ethereum, you have a high of 44.06, both trading pretty much uh, together. Uh, and Coinbase, you're at 265 today. I was talking about my program yesterday for the rapid run that we've had in Bitcoin. Uh, you have Bitcoin almost back at the highs versus you had Coinbase the day Bitcoin went public at about 429. I imagine if you got into, I mean, look at where Bitcoin has been. You back up Bitcoin in August. All right. No, excuse me. July 21st was the low at 30,000. OK. Coinbase on July 31st was trading at 235. If you said to somebody that bought Coinbase uh, on July 31st at 2.30 and change, that Bitcoin's gonna be back above 60,000 by October. Where do you think Coinbase is gonna be? Pretty sure they would have thought that Coinbase might be trading above 260 to 265. Uh, point being, be careful of Coinbase. There's a lot of growth already priced into this equity, regardless of what price Bitcoin's trading at. You've seen the frenzy. Now, I saw some headline out there that there was another uh, exchange that eclipsed them as the number one out there for a period of time. Uh, so they have some competition coming down the line as well. Not to mention, you know, you're going to have, what is it, PayPal or Square? You're going to be able to buy crypto, hold crypto. Uh, they're first in the sector. They're going to be a player forever, for sure. But they're going to have some competition, and they have an valuation right now. You're pushing, I think, yeah, $56 billion market cap for that company. So buyer beware. All right, what else we got going on? Checking over. No, this is, I want to get in here. So ETFs, talking about ETFs, they could be coming down the line. That's part of what's causing this big, big run here. Um, and let me just pull up. I wanted to pull up this graphic I got from Bloomberg today. Uh, they have, uh, this might be in one of the articles I was reading about, 
So you see that in terms of when the potential approval of an ETF could come down the line. It's remarkable that uh, it has arrived as in, you know, we're talking about potentially four by the end of the month with five out there November 1st. Uh, I've seen the stats of probabilities and who knows where these probabilities came from, but all probabilities not equal for these getting passed. Some of them more likely than others. Nonetheless, they're all up for approval by the end of this month, the four of them, and then, excuse me, the fifth on the first. Now they talk about you know, whether it's institutional, right, and retail demand, it's right near the highs. As the deadline looms, the cutoff for action on ProShares and Vesco filings is next week. And they've been pushing for this for about a decade. But I was reading articles about this last week as well that some analysts say, you know, it's not uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. Yes, you, you can make the case that it may happen, but not signed, sealed, and delivered, as in there could be a reversal here. Uh, and when you have Bitcoin trading basically at all-time highs, I mean, folks, remember the last time that you had Bitcoin trading at all-time highs, they pushed out Coinbase to the public at $400 and change. Bitcoin is, again, going to be pushing all-time highs at a time that you might have ETFs come into the sector. The big difference here is that if you get a retail exposure for a regulated ETF, I mean, you see it with the likes of gold ETFs, right? So the GDX. Um, and here are the actual approvals. So this is what I was talking about in terms of the approval dates, the possibilities. Uh, ProShares has got a two to one odds of getting approved. Not sure where they're getting these odds, okay? Um, but you can see down the line, Van Eck, they're at a 21 for some reason. Galaxy, not sure what they're doing, but they're at 50 to one. They're gonna get their act together. No, I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to see how those diverge the odds of getting past um, approval, excuse me. Uh, but you can see even further in November, right? Now, I wonder why these are such outliers uh, as you get further into that strategy, uh, into the line in terms of how many getting approved. Nonetheless, they're coming down the line, but I would be buyer beware at 60,000 Bitcoin when you're pushing it out. But as I said, you start buying, you start having people buying ETFs, they are going to be forced to buy Bitcoin. It could just add to the volatility of a very volatile index already, already um, as we're at 60,000. All right, point made there. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. Some of the stocks are moving today. We talked about Goldman Sachs. Moderna's rising after uh, the FED and FDA panel recommendation for a booster. They also got an upgrade today as well. They were talking about in the den earlier. Piper Sandler, I think, upgraded Moderna as well. Moderna shares quite a pullback recently from 450, 497, the high back in August, down to 300. This morning, though, we're up about 10 bucks. There's your pre-market action, up 340 for Moderna shares. Oh, Virgin Galactic. This is a good one. Okay. I got this article ready. Virgin Galactic falls after delaying first commercial flight. Shares slide on unexpected rescheduling to late next year. Potential issue with joint materials in a lab test. Now, man, you want to talk about buyer beware, folks. Stay away from this equity. Uh, from 24 bucks down to 18, you're up from that low two bucks already to 2047 but you're going to open down almost 20 percent on this equity you take a look at the ebb and flow of this equity you rise up to 62 bucks in february this is just this year folks down to 14 bucks in may you rise back up above 55 dollars when branson goes into space they raise money they push shares out to the public on that news at 50 bucks in change all right and you're back to 24 bucks now i believe this is the equity that you've had some of the founders. Yeah, you had a run up back in 2020 uh, as well, not to mention the run up you had in December. I believe, and I'll pull it up, that you have a lot of the founders even taking out some of the money they've had in here. I mean, you know, you have a run up to 50, 60 bucks, you push it out with the PR machine that's the best around. For, you know, Richard Branson, hard to argue that he does not have a PR machine that's one of the best around. And they push it up to 55, 60 bucks. He flies into space. They push paper out to the public. It pulls back. Then they announce things are delayed. Uh, buyer beware in a big way there. They have a long way to go to be turning anything to the tune of profits. When you talk about a company valued at $5 billion, even at yesterday's close, okay, so you were pushing 14 billion market cap, something like that at the higher levels. The whole space tourism industry, folks, might be worth a couple billion dollars over the next five or ten years or something like that right it's a very niche business uh where you can gain some valuation is if you follow elon musk's lead and you start pushing defense contracts uh that'll push you up to 100 billion market cap 
But just pushing space tourism travel, okay, when you got a 14 billion market cap, there's a reason why the founders were cashing out and pushing paper to the public, folks, because that company does not belong as a company that's worth 14 billion, let alone doesn't belong to be a $5 billion company either, because that's what it was last night. And you're going to be down 20%. They're going to push back flights. They're not quite there. Listen, Branson realized he had to get into space. The race was on. That was the deal. He had to do it. He did it. They pushed the stock up. They raised the public uh, money. And, and now they're dealing with the woes of an actual company that's struggling. And you're down to 20 bucks overnight. And I imagine that's not where you're going to stop on this thing. Um, because even if they're pushing out flights, okay, they have a tough business model ahead of them um, in a big way. But nonetheless, that news comes out down about 20%. Told analysts in August it was targeting a first private astronaut flight late Q3 next year. And uh, that pushed back as uh, they're going to delay that even further. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. s and is up 22 right now. Dow up 256. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets positive. S&P's up 21 points. Dow up 220 points. NASDAQ 100 up above 47. Russell up 22 points. Jumping around to commodities. Bitcoin, commodity, currency, either way, up 2200 bucks right now, above 60000 Gold contract, continuing to slide a bit, down 28 bucks, right at that 1770 price point. Been there since about 9 a.m. this morning. 
And we jump to notes and bonds for the action right now. You're down about 12 ticks at 130.105 right now in the 10-year. You get yields at about 1.56%. And we jump over to the VIX. As we got a VIX at 16.53. Uh, volatility getting sucked out of this market. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. It seems like there's still some fears as we come into an earnings season that's supposed to be pretty volatile. What happened to, to all the fear of an earnings season that has the pressures of wages, um, supply disruptions, et cetera? Earnings may take a big hit. We saw what happened with FedEx last uh, quarter when they came out with their numbers. You had FedEx go from a price point of 250 down to 230, 230 and change. Uh, and we're trading at 228 on FedEx, but that having to do with spending $450 million in 90 days extra. And it looked like the market knew it was coming, right? Look at the action that FedEx had from June through September. You trade from 300 down to 250 uh, into their earnings, and you gap lower away on what they had to spend. Quite a pullback for FedEx shares. Speaking of retailers, uh, retailers expect to disappoint holiday customers, study fines. So interesting. Now, this article was out a couple days ago, but interesting going over uh, when you talk about three out of four retailers are talking about potentially shoppers expect more from stores than they can deliver due to labor squeeze. According to a survey by workforce management specialist UKG, 85% expect supply chain disruptions to affect customers. We've become pretty spoiled in the day of Amazon, days of Amazon. Excuse me, same day delivery, next day delivery, sometimes same day, sometimes within a couple hours delivery. I use Instacart for groceries. I have groceries delivered within an hour or two, paying a premium, of course. Uh, if you're out there, you really got some items you want for Christmas, folks. We're only two months away. We're two months and 10 days, right? It's October 15th. We got Halloween coming down the line this month, Thanksgiving next month, Christmas in December. Go out there and get those presents because it can't go wrong. You know, you can't go wrong. Uh, this might be the season you want to uh, avoid some late shopping because I imagine we're going to see things play out. The tough part about when supply lines are so strained is that when you get a rush, which you're going to get at Christmas, those are going to be exacerbated even more, right? So even more so than usual, you're going to see supply chains disrupted, maybe wages uh, making it difficult for companies to hire the way they would, not having as many employees on hand to process orders, et cetera. Very real threat that you think you can order stuff late in the day, uh, late in the season, I should say, and it arrived. I mean, Amazon was notorious in, in making sure things got to the package, to the home when they were supposed to around the holidays. They always have that kind of deadline, hard line number of when you can order. It's probably December 21st or 22nd, right? Make sure your presents arrive by Christmas Eve. I would not be trusting of those types of guarantees this time around, folks. Amazon usually gets it done, but some things are going to be out of some people's control. Uh, retaining workers can be difficult as well, according to the study. So this was 312 store managers, owners, and executives between late August and early September. Okay, things have gotten worse since then, too. Uh, about 84% of retailers that said they expect employees to voluntarily quit at least monthly. This season's temporary hires are critical to get through December, but permanent, permanent positions are even more important um, to fill, according to retailers. Nonetheless, that's going to persist, folks. Interesting when we have retail sales out this morning, right? Big numbers in retail sales. We get some lofty expectations for holiday season. We have markets basically sucking all the volatility out of the room. And meanwhile, we're coming into a period of earnings that might see some uh, wage pressures, inflation pet pressures, supply chain disruptions, et cetera. Let's take a look at Netflix. Netflix shares basically flat today at 634. We're going to pull up uh, Netflix. Let's delete that. Um, so next week, excuse me, we have earnings out for Netflix. And I'm on the Thinkorswim platform. You can see the implied volatility, folks. If you want action through today, you got about an $8 implied move. Okay, those are the options that expire today, October 15th. When you go to next week, $42 move. That's right, because guess why? Because we got earnings next week. $42 implied move, basically meaning if you buy an at-the-money put and call, you're talking about $21 on each side of that. Uh, and they're out with their numbers, and man, they're going to have some lofty expectations when you just went from basically 500 to 635 I mean, what is that? That's a good 26% pop in the span of two months coming into their earnings numbers. Now, Netflix did have a nice consolidation. You consolidated for the better part of more than a year from June or July, I should say, of 2020. You finally break out 
of that trading area in August of 2023. There's some huge consolidations going on. Amazon comes to mind. Uh, Amazon shares, you're talking about from same area, Netflix, June or July of 2020. Amazon's still in that consolidation, trading at 3307 right now. Top of that range, about 3500. If you take a look at the Fibonacci, 382 is where we pop back to 2959, kind of the bottom area of the consolidation lines up to that 382 from the full run we had from the COVID lows of March of last year to the highs of 37.73, July 12th. All right, jumping down the line to what else we got going on for stocks moving. We talked about Moderna. We talked about Virgin Galactic. Uh, PNC is also out with their numbers. They beat 375 versus 320 revenue tops estimates as well. Let's see if they hold on to the gains. All the banks, big numbers in a big way. Uh, no, not holding on to the gains. They're down 2% on the open right there. 198.14. Let's jump around to Goldman Sachs, see how they're trading on the open this morning. Goldman Sachs shares up 2%. Uh, let's see how the other banks are reacting. Look at this. Morgan Stanley up 1.5%, extending the gains. Bank of America up another 9 tenths percent. Now, we have rising yields going on today. All right, we got the 10-year down 14 ticks now. We're taking talking about session lows right now. That's putting a little bit of a bid in a big way in the bank. City's up 2% right now. Let's check out JP Morgan. They started it off Wednesday up about 7 tenths percent. Um, uh, Wells Fargo, the dog of the group, still up 2.4%. Wells Fargo traded lower in a big way yesterday. Jumping down the line to what else we got going on. Let's see. Alcoa, yeah, Alcoa out with their numbers as well. Uh, 205 versus $1.80. Aluminum producers' revenue topped estimates. Aluminum price has been through the roof. AA is their symbol. There's a pop for you. Up 10.1% Alcoa Aluminum. My goodness. Look at this run. That's back a year. That's your three-year weekly from COVID lows of 5 bucks. We're trading at $53 right now. This year, folks, this year, we were trading at 17 bucks on Alcoa uh, back in January. Quite a run for this equity. Aluminum through the roof. Commodities in general through the roof in a big way. Crude right now. Look at this. Back to a 15-minute. We got crude right near highs of 82.23 right now. Gold continuing to slide down $31 right now. Gold 17.66. Um, you know what? I'm just going to jump over and take a look at, as we come into this break, some of the FX. The euro US dollar right now, because we get some moves going on. Uh, 116.01, pretty tame action. I was jumping around earlier. You take a look at the move we've had for the US dollar yen. I mean, look at that, right? Take a look at the daily. Quite the run, this thing. It's just continuing from almost 109, less than a month ago. You have the US dollar yen right now. You're pushing one. 1439 quite an acceleration uh, and that contributing to gold as well all right folks stay tuned we'll be coming back after the break s ps right now up 22 points remarkable within 100 points of the all-time highs yet again in the s p we'll check back to the nasdaq to we'll see what other equities we have moving we'll check out what we have going on next week as well with earnings stay tuned over here Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps up about 18 points, holding pretty well on the open right now. you got the NASDAQ 100 barely in the green, it rising yields, and still with rising yields, you get tech stocks in the green right now. Dow up 201 right now, 34,989, just dipping back below 35,000 on the futures. Russell, the strongest index, up about 9 tenths percent, 2291. You want to talk about a consolidation, folks. Look at this consolidation we've had in the Russell. you got to go back to February. This thing has been chopping around between 2100 and 2300. We've gotten above that price level on a couple occasions. You could call it about 2340 with the prior peaks we had in June and late June. The real high we had was March 15th, but we're talking about coming right up to that upper boundary line in the Russell right now, 2290, positive by 18 points. All right, jumping back to the headline I had up there. So the U.S. is going to allow vaccinated foreigners to enter from November 8th. So this was the order that was announced. Scrolling down for that date. Uh, September, yes, first announced September 20th. But there was no date that was on that originally. Um, as the Biden administration didn't immediately say when the measure would kick in. Airlines have been applauded the move. Of course, they have. They want more customers. Uh, so November 8th is the day that that goes into practice. The U.S. is going to recognize any World Health Organization authorized vaccine for foreigners. Uh, foreigners are going to need, here we go, vaccinated people. Yeah, so if you're vaccinated, you need a prior test in the last 72 hours. This is for non-citizens. If you're unvaccinated foreigners, you're generally going to be barred. Unvaccinated Americans need a COVID test to come back. Uh, airlines, I mean, that was already priced in. They knew it was coming down the line at some point, but nonetheless, when it actually puts a date on it, you're seeing an acceleration. You have American up 2.2% right now. You got Delta shares up 1.5% right now. United Airlines up 2% as well. Not going to have as big of an impact on JetBlue, you'd think, but guess what? We're up 1.8% on domestic even, because this was talking about international, right? So maybe the airline's not exactly trading up because of that. Let's jump over to Southwest. Up about half a percent. Check out the cruise ships. All the travel stocks, I guess. Carnival up about 2% right now. You take a look at this thing. You could say, I mean, you're talking about right near the lower boundary line of this channel line we've had on Carnival. Upper boundary line maybe matching up with some of these peaks here. We did get a little ahead of itself potentially. Uh, maybe you take, excuse me, maybe you take a little linear regression. Try and find where that line best fits the peaks that we've had. Nonetheless, you see, kind of near the bottom channel line. Um, eventually, cruises will take uh, an acceleration to upward price territory, and we are still so far near the lowest. I mean, remarkable that you're talking about you could be in negative prices by buying the cruise ships 16 months after June. 
Uh, that's where things get scary in investments, folks, where you miss out a run on the S&P. You say, I'm going to get in cruise ships. I know it's going to take a while, but maybe I'll ride out that longevity until they get back to a time that we've been at previous. And man, things taking a little bit longer than we thought, but maybe, maybe, because when you put that thing on that daily, quite a little trend we're dealing with, and we're not really right near the lower boundary line. Speaking of right near the lower boundary line, cannabis stocks. My goodness, you'd think you got some action going yesterday, and 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 the market gives it up. Cannabis, this thing has just been a dog from 56 bucks. We're down to 1286 in October. We're at 1356 now. Yesterday, check out the run this thing has. They bought Wana Brands, which is uh, the biggest edible maker in North America, I believe. And the market loved that idea initially until they sold it off. And now you're basically back to almost where that deal didn't even take place to 1355. You take a look at this thing on a five year weekly, okay? You are back to where we were trading at. Yeah, uh, no, let's back it up even further. What were we back to? Yeah, this is what I thought. November of 2016, almost five years ago, you have Canopy trading at prices. People have been in this stock for five years and you're at break even. That has to be frustrating. But man, this thing is talking about ebbs and flows, uh, but not the action you wanted to see yesterday is the point there. You're selling off again. You're already down a buck from where we were yesterday in the middle of the day, and they are just struggling to find a bid. Now, Constellation owns about 40% of that company. This thing has been quite the company. Uh, you back up a three-year weekly to see the full COVID lows. You really accelerate in November with the market up to 244. If you're looking to get in Constellation, the 382 of that run was about 212. Maybe we'll get back down there. That's an area that we had support in Constellation about August to Octo through October. That might be a better play, uh, probably a less volatile play to say the least. If you do want some exposure to the cannabis sector, you get into Constellation. They got Modelo, they got Corona, um, along with some type of hard seltzer brand. I forget what they have in there. Um, and I may have a couple shares of, of Constellation, folks. I, I, I forget I do. It's a strong company. It is, and I've traded it, uh, and it is a strong company. And it allows you some exposure to the cannabis sector without trying to go all in on some of these equities because, look, no matter what you choose, Tilray shares, can you find a bit on that chart, folks? Remarkable. Um, and things just not progressing to the speed they thought. I mean, you put this thing on a on a five year, you go back to 2018. Remember when that hit 300? My goodness. Talk about people getting pilfered uh, in a big way. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around to some of the stories, we'll stick to NHL. The NHL is back. You got the Lightning, back-to-back -back champions. Not bad. Gotta love hockey, folks. If you don't love hockey, give it a try. Uh, NHL started its billion-dollar deal with ESPN and Turner Sports. Here's how many people watch the season opener. So the NHL had been on, had been on NBC Sports for the longest time. That deal changed. You have them going with ESPN, a billion-dollar media rights package with ESPN and Turner Sports. Uh, and they had opening night a couple nights ago. Tuesday night, I believe, was opening night. They got the numbers out there now. You had an average of 884,000 viewers for the doubleheader on Tuesday. Now, that's an average. But when you get into the numbers they had for each one, you had the season open up with Pittsburgh at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay raised the, the banner on that game. Pretty cool Tuesday from last year. Uh, Pittsburgh got it done against Tampa 6-2. to two. That game averaged almost a million viewers on Tuesday, peaked at over 1 million viewers. Uh, and then the second game, you had the expansion team, the Seattle Kraken, at the, the other most recent uh, expansion team, the uh, Las Vegas Knights. That game a little bit less, 782,000 viewers. It would make sense when you have an expansion team. Interesting that they decided to go with Seattle Kraken in the game two there. Uh, but nonetheless, some pretty strong numbers in sports. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in terms of the streaming wars. Disney shares up about a tenth of a percent today. You were down to 170 earlier Wednesday. Uh, but they have ESPN. It'll be interesting to see how they leverage that because that's going to be part of how these things play out. And sports are just one of the, I mean, I think there's something like the most watched programs for the year. Sports programs make up a large majority of those because you got the Super Bowl in there, right? Maybe you have... Uh, the World Series, maybe you got the NBA playoffs, etc. Sports dominate in a big way, and that's part of the reason why I like Disney. Now, Disney, you want to talk about a consolidation, folks. 
You've been chopping around between 170 and 180 and change. You pull it up, you're right at that 382 is 170. Look how many times this thing has touched 170, right? Whether you back it up to January, May, June, July, September, up to 174. Consolidation can persist though. Stay tuned folks, we'll be coming right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 23 points right now. Quite the acceleration from Wednesday's lows. We have the NASDAQ 100 positive, Dow up 273, Russell up 22 points. Folks, Tuesday, coming down the line, Tuesday, amazing. We're talking about October 19th. Basil's going to be in there with opening call subscribers for a webinar, 90-minute webinar, folks, what to prepare for into year's end and what sectors to focus on. Basil will be in there from 4 till 5.30, following Tom's show on Tuesday afternoon. If you haven't checked out the opening call, folks, a great time to do it. You can sign up on the front page of TFNN. You can sign up for whether it's the monthly at a price of $149, six month, $695. You save 22% or $199. The year, you save $593 or 33% at $1195. All of those come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're thinking about staying on, I encourage you to do so. You can check out the six month or the yearly or just go with the monthly, all of them 30 days. 
Now, you gain access to, of course, Basil's opening call, daily trading service. He puts out updates every trading day, also has updates most of the time on the weekend. Sometimes he puts videos out there. Uh, and what you also gain access to, I pulled it up over the break. Now, Basil's up next, of course, Tiger Technician's Hour. But you gain access to the archive webinars, and we reference it many times that you can watch these as well. Um, and just a quick glimpse, I say he's got six, seven, eight of them. I mean, talking about dressing up the charts in the Chapman Wave, you got a, an hour and 37 minute webinar, folks, that Basil did earlier this year, a few months ago in April. You gain access to that. So check it out today. You gain access to all of this over the weekend. You gain access to Basil's trading service. And then, of course, you gain access to the 90 minute webinar he'll be doing coming up uh, Tuesday night, October 19th, from 4 till 5.30. What to prepare for into the year's end and what sectors to focus on. Pretty remarkable. Uh, that you got Christmas in two months and 10 days. When I put it that way earlier in the show, I said, man, I got to end my program, pull up Amazon and start doing some shopping. We'll see. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in, starting your Friday with me. Stay tuned. We got Basil up next. We got Fast Market coming up at 11. Larry Pesavento, he is live at noon uh, with Trade What You See. Steve Rhodes, we're going to have a replay. He did his program at 8 o'clock, but Steve's program will be airing at 1. Dave White live at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. Look at this S&P, folks. It's catching a bid yet again. We got the S&Ps making basically highs for the session right now of 27 points. The Dow above 35,000. Russell up 25 points. Gold down 25 bucks. Maybe it can find a little bit of a bid on that bounce. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Friday.